that's why the drum pitch helps, right? Hi, welcome, I'm Clay. And today you're gonna to learn how to practice effectively, learn effectively with a drone pitch. The basic idea is this, there is a drone playing, all right, I like to call it drone, all right, that is a sustained sound, all right, something that is droning on. Uh, a lot of the instruction manuals or things that you'll see will call it a reference pitch. They mean the same thing, all right. So here's the basic idea is I turn the pitch on and I play along. <laughs> As I'm playing along there, I'm tuning each of the notes to the drone pitch or reference pitch. Okay. In this example, I was playing G major scale along to a G. And I think this is the easiest way to get started with practicing with the drone pitch. Pick a note to play that is in the key of whatever you're doing. So, for example, playing G major scale, so I picked a G. Let's do uh, one more. Say I want to do D major. So I'm going to throw it on D here. So forth and so on, tuning my notes to the drone, okay? And the drone gives me a center, it gives me something to tune everything to, and that's why it helps improve my intonation. Now let's say it's a piece, like say the swan, which is a great piece to show you this. I'm going to put it back on the G, right? Because the swan starts in G major. That's why the drone pitch helps, right? I also wanted to show you the swan because it's a slow piece already. This is the kind of tempo you're going to want to take when you are practicing with a drone pitch. You want to be able to hear each of the notes you're playing very clearly against the drone while it is playing. Now, just using it without doing anything else will improve your intonation. That's why I always suggest to students that you use a drone, that you have something that's helping you tune up, something which is orally helping you tune up, right? Not just looking at a needle on a tuner. You get a lot more, exponentially more, when you stop and analyze and make decisions about your intonation. I did practice with a drone pitch for a very long time and my intonation improved a lot in the beginning and then it kind of plateaued. I would make little bits of progress but not very much because I wasn't stopping to analyze saying it's sharp, it's flat. Just like when I'm playing an ensemble, or when students are playing in the ensemble, you can correct your pitch along to the drone, but that doesn't fix your intonation in the long run, right? You're just constantly correcting without actually fixing the problem and being proactive about fixing intonation. So you have to treat the drone, the drone practice, the way you would any other practice, okay? In order for it to be the most effective, I have to stop and I have to say, hmm, all right, that note was sharp that note was flat. I want to do it different next time. Remember, the drone pitch, like the metronome, is a diagnostic tool. It is your stethoscope. You are still the doctor. You have to make the diagnosis. This machine doesn't make the diagnosis. It only allows me to see what the diagnosis should be, right? So, for example, when I was playing before, flat the last time I played it so let's try to shoot a little higher well oh, I'm almost there still a little bit flat I think that was it let's try it one more time oh, I overshot it Uh, 
that's better, all right? This is also one of the tools I use when shifting, as you can see when I'm practicing a lot of shifts. And if you want to see my video on shifting, uh, please see that. I'll link it up here and in the description. Uh, go check that out. Now, what do I do when it's not such an easy choice? When, you know, I have this piece or the scale that's in G major, so I put it on a G, easy. Another school of thought when you're practicing with a drum pitch is to put it on the note that you tune to. So we tune to A440 at the beginning here. So maybe I put it on an A and I'll show you why. So far I can hear all that very easily. here because of the second but now I'm gonna have something different I'm gonna have an A sharp C sharp So the G works really well when I'm in G major, but what happens when I switch to all those F sharps, G sharps, C sharps, D sharps, okay? Need something else to really hear the intonation. Now, after playing for 30 years, could I practice along to the G? Sure I could, but if you're just starting out, switch the note when you switch to a passage that's very chromatic or has a lot of accidentals like that. A is a good choice for that. Um, another good choice here, just specifically for the swan, all right, if you're having trouble hearing the A, is to go to an F sharp, because this scale, as it starts to go up, starts on an F sharp. So we'll just start there. Oh, I was flat. Don't keep going. I like the F sharp too. All right. Now I want to make sure I'm tuning up a group of notes, a passage. A phrase. You can, and I, and I talk about this in the shifting video, you can put the drone on a one single target note, like if it's a big shift, and that is useful, okay? If you're really, really having trouble, then yeah, go pitch by pitch, note by note, tune each one of them up. This is another reason I love my Seiko metronome here. This device will play every note on the cello, okay? Really, really great device. I'll, you know, if you're interested in this, I'll put a link in the description. You can go check this out. So F sharp or A or something else, if it has a bunch of uh, accidentals or it's very, very chromatic, if you know what the key is and you know what the center of pitch is because you've analyzed it, um, then of course play to that pitch. But for something like the swan, I think F sharp or A is great. Just remember, the more difficult the passage or the more difficult the intonation is, the slower you have to go and the more you have to analyze. Let's take a third octave scale here, for example. I'm going to put it back on the G. I'm going to play scale. Whoop, flat. Whoop, little sharp at the end. All right. So I'm going that slowly so that I can hear each pitch in the scale against the drone. It's really, really important that I do that so that I can make that decision. Is it in tune? Is it sharp? Is it flat? I have to teach my fingers to land on the note in tune. Making the correction midstream does not correct intonation. That's worth saying again. Correcting the note midstream does not fix intonation. Only going back, being proactive, and thinking ahead, and getting your note to land on the note in tune, that's what corrects intonation. All right? That's why the drum pitch can help you a lot in the beginning and then maybe plateau, like it did for me, if you're just using it to correct your fingers midstream, mid-note, mid-playing. Okay? If you're using it to analyze and correct and be proactive, this can be really, really helpful to getting you to that intonation that you want, which is 
landing on the note the first time without the correction. That should always be our goal, that we land on the note in tune, or as close to in tune as possible. All right, so that's how to practice with a drone pitch. Uh, if you got something out of this, if you like it, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and leave me some comments down below. Leave me some questions. What are you struggling with? What are you struggling with, with intonation, with playing, with analyzing? Are you struggling with practicing with a drone and getting something out of it? Please leave me some questions below, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.